before it goes into, depending on the electronics involved, it will uh, appear as a zero or one. So basically, intermediate value, that means uh, you know, we don't know what that is. Logically speaking, it may not uh, make sense. Any questions or comments? Okay, so uh, uh, that was about uh, fault modeling. And now let us uh, look at test generation. So we are starting a new uh, topic, which is uh, test generation. Now how do we generate uh, tests? We had a, a, a student many years ago, and he actually was working on this, and so he did a lot of uh, simulations. And sometimes he would find that uh, he would uh, analyze some circuits, analyze some defects, and come up with uh, some results, and we couldn't interpret those results. And sometimes we found that there were some uh, uh, types of behavior that have not been identified before, so something that we couldn't understand led us to uh, some uh, new ideas. And later he worked for different uh, companies and uh, uh, he actually wrote three or four books. And uh, uh, I think uh, the last time he was at uh, uh, University of San Jose. He was actually a distinguished uh, speaker in computer science department uh, uh, seminar a couple of years ago. Okay, so let's look at uh, test generation. And uh, we are look, going to uh, look at a couple of uh, approaches. One approach is algebra. And our uh, other approach is a uh, structure. And uh, we are going to use, uh, uh, do both of them. This is using Boolean algebra, and this is using structure of the circuit. Now, how many of you like uh, Boolean algebra? OK, how many like uh, pictures, structures? OK, some of you are. Uh, OK, after we have done both, then uh, see which of the two methods you like better. And it will turn out that they are somewhat equivalent. And uh, uh, but, the, uh, but there's a nice uh, contrast in the approaches, even though they are uh, analogous. Now we are going to be talking about a uh, circuit under test unit under test. Sometimes we abbreviate that as unit under test or circuit under test. You might uh, encounter these uh, abbreviations. And basically, uh, the idea is that here is the unit. So here is the unit under test. Uh, let's see, which term do you like better? Unit under test or circuit under test? Uh, doesn't matter. Let's call it unit under test. Here we have the inputs. And here we have the outputs. So the idea is you want to apply some inputs and see if a certain fault, here we have a fault, which is in there, if a certain fault will be tested or not by looking at the outputs. And um, so here, so we will uh, see is 
the output uh, as expected. And if the output is not what you expect, you have a defect in there. There are uh, two kinds of uh, test approaches, two major kinds. You have a functional testing approach. And in uh, software, people tend to call this black box. And there is a, a structural approach. And if you do that in software, people call it uh, white box. We are going to be doing hardware, but sometimes I will mention some of the analogies from software. Basically, with the functional testing, you know the function. If you apply this input, this is what you expect from the output, and you don't care about what is inside, that is functional testing. Now, in case of structural testing, you know what is inside, so that means you know more, you know the internal implementation, and somehow you take that into account when you uh, generate uh, tests. Now, there is uh, a type of testing which is called a random testing. and uh, a form of functional testing. In case of random testing, you randomly generate some inputs and you apply and see if the output is what you expect. Um, and let me mention that in truth, random testing is uh, pseudorandom. Random testing is almost always a pseudorandom. That means it is, uh, they try to approximate a randomness. True randomness is practically impossible to achieve. But they try to make it as random as possible. And that is why it is called uh, pseudo-random. Now uh, that reminds me of something. Uh, a, a, a while ago I uh, was invited to visit China to give some lectures. And uh, since I'm a vegetarian, so, uh, so they were sometimes take me to uh, Chinese vegetarian restaurants. There are some, there are not that many, but you have to find them. And in Chinese vegetarian cuisine, they make uh, things that look like uh, some uh, uh, meat dishes. So for example, something that looks like a fish is actually all vegetarian. So, uh, so my uh, uh, friends who had invited me, they were saying, this is pseudo fish. <laughs> and this is pseudo duck. <laughs> so, the so pseudo random is something that attempts to be uh, attempts to look like uh, random, and if it, if it is good, then it comes close to uh, randomness. There are actually tests for randomness that you can apply, and you can evaluate the degree of uh, randomness. Now, let me also mention the idea of a fault, uh, test coverage, or sometimes we call it fault coverage. A single test will typically cover several potential faults. So if you have apply a single test, 
So when you apply a certain number of tests, you would uh, uh, detect, you would uh, potentially detect uh, a number of potential faults. Now if you wanted to determine coverage, so a fault is covered if under a given test it would be detected. Now the coverage obtained by a test set can be evaluated. by a fault simulator. Basically, you apply some uh, set of tests and the fault simulator will tell you you have uh, achieved 85% or 95% or whatever test coverage. It is very similar to uh, uh, test coverage tools for software you, where you can get a certain, you can get 85% uh, statement coverage or a branch coverage or very similar idea. But right now, uh, let us assume that we are talking about hardware uh, defects. Coverage is defined as number of faults covered out of uh, total number of possible faults and usually given as percentage. Now, let us start, now we are going to start gradually. So first we will consider the problem of testing for individual faults, and then we will consider testing for uh, all possible faults in a circuit. And so let's look at testing for individual faults. And so we are going to look at the test generation problem. Now later on, we are going to consider that it would not make sense to uh, generate a test for each individual fault. In the beginning, we will do that. But later on, I will mention about fault collapsing. That instead of having to consider all possible faults, you can reduce the number of faults and still have the same effect. And then we will consider the test set compaction problem. So you are given a set of tests and how you can reduce the number of tests so that you achieve the same coverage uh, with uh, fewer faults. So we'll consider those problems later. But let us first consider the test generation problem. And uh, so basically, uh, we are applying some inputs and observing some outputs. And how do we find test for a given fault? Now we are going to use a notation. Uh, and notice that test generation is going to uh, require two things. You need to excite the fault. Maybe let me squeeze that in here. 